All right, uh, we're going to be playing a workplace game called 1B, a raise to 100. Uh, you just need one of these sheets to share between you and your partner, uh, and the three dice, um, two numbered one through six, one die number four through nine, and some different colored pencils. You would be sharing these three, and today you get to use the dice tower. Woo! Okay, remember the commutative property of multiplication that's going to be important today. Because um, you remember four rows of three. Row, row, row your boats. One, two, three, four times three equals three times four. Remember, you guys call, probably called this the turnaround fact. Um, you can use either one today. All right, so the object of this game is to fill as much of the grid as possible without going over. You cannot go over 100. The first player rolls off. It says any three dice. We're gonna or any two dice. We're gonna use all three, and then you get to choose two, which will be very important at the end because right away you're gonna to want to use that bigger number. At the end, you might want to use this three times one, um, so to fill in some of those smaller gaps at the end. All right, in the box below, the player writes the equation. So in this case, if I spun a 7, 3, and 1, and I'm only going to use a 7 and 3 right away to fill up a bigger chunk, I can remember the commutative property, 7 times 3, or I can use 3 times 7. In this case, they're going to use 3 times 7. That's 3 row, 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 boats of 7 and 21 uh, equals 21. You can write it right in there with a regular pencil, if you like, like we did before. Now, the, as the players fill up the grids, you can, um, you can color in two or more ones. Like, remember, we can break it apart into partial products. So two times six. So all these right here, let's just go back. All these, say, like these two right here are filled in. Three times seven, five times eight. Now, we have all this. If you get a 4 times 6, you can't fit it in there. So you could break it up into 2 times 6 plus 2 times 6. Remember, that's the partial product. Um, in this case, you could also use a commutative property, which means you're going to leave this one alone, but you're going to do the turnaround fact on this one. Here's your 2 times 6. Check. And up here is your 6 times 2, 6 rows of 2. If you're going to break something up, you do have to prove it down below in that same color. Remember, if you break it up to same color, so these are the reds, this would be here, the orange, this would be that tealy blue. Okay, if a player roll, it cannot go into that and it's got all three of them say, oh my gosh, I have hardly anything left, nothing fits, even if I break it apart, wah, wah, wah. you just lose that turn and the other person gets to go. You're going to stop playing when um, both players decide it's, man, we just got these little teeny ones left, and we keep rolling, and we can't fill this up. It's getting kind of frustrating at this time. So if you both say stop, it is stop. And then at the end, you just take and look at these, and you say, okay, well, if this is 100... I'm going to just look at my open whites and subtract it out. It's a lot easier at that point. 100 minus 7, 93. In this case, he had 11 of them. 100 minus 11, 89. Technically, the player 1 would win, but as you know, we're both learning math, so you're both winners. Okay, so that is... Um, Introducing our workplace for today. Remember our cooperative learning expectations. Stay with your group. Be kind. Um, and help each other out. Use your voice levels appropriately. And have some fun learning math.